Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today, we are going to do a mashup of all of the incredible guests that we have highlighted through this September Suicide Prevention Month. We have talked to the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay. We've talked to NAMI. We've talked to um, Celebrate Recovery. We've talked to great therapist, Ken Donaldson. We've talked to Jennifer Dietz, the attorney who lost her twin sister to suicide along with her father many years ago. So we wanna provide you with some of the best in town that are offering solutions and some tips about what you can do to prevent suicide, to prevent one more person losing their life to this incredible mental health crisis that we're having. I hope you stick around. We need you here. We love you. And I hope you enjoy the mashup. I am very, very grateful to bring you Clara Reynolds, who is the CEO and president of the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay. And you know, it's stigma that prevents so many uh, from reaching out and getting the help that they need. Because our mission is to ensure that no one has to face a crisis alone. And why this mission in life that you have today in your career has intersected? Well, and so, my mother was a police officer with uh, Tampa uh, Police Department. And in um, 1986, she took her own life using her service revolver. And so that left me as a teenager at the time um, in uh, a position where I was uh, forced into the child welfare system. And so those experiences absolutely impacted me and, and led me to this journey that I have been on, becoming a licensed clinician and working in a variety of settings, uh, but really coming here to the crisis center where our focus is on trauma, is on crisis, is on- I could, I would talk about mental health all day long, and I would talk about all the things that most people don't want to talk about, because I do believe that those are the things that are going to move the needle. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, I would agree 100%. You know, it's so interesting in this day and time that we can talk about so many things. We can talk about breast cancer. We can talk about erectile dysfunction. We can talk about all of these things. But when it comes to diseases of the brain, depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, we still feel like we can't have these conversations. We still feel like that it's somehow a flaw or it's a weakness on our part when we're struggling with diseases of the brain. And so anytime we get the opportunity to have these conversations, to let folks in the community know that it is okay to be struggling with depression and anxiety. It is okay to have these thoughts. It's what you do about them. That is what is so important. I want to take that for granted. I really want to break down what is available through the wonderful organization of NAMI. So, you know, within the greater mental health community, there are smaller communities and everyone has a different lived experience. So the person living with a diagnosis, they've got their own course and support group. And that's separate from the parent, the spouse, the sibling, the friend, or just the ally who wants to learn more about how they can better support without losing themselves. We also have Sharing Hope, which is just for the African-American experience. We have a faith net for people in faith communities and really want, who want to understand, okay, where is the diagnosis and God and how does that all work for me? Um, we've had requests for, of course, LGBTQ uh, law enforcement because everyone experiences mental illness differently and mental health challenges. Anybody that is reaching out and getting any kind of help, knowing that there are people out there that um, can show you that they're not alone, right? Absolutely, and the really great thing about Celebrate Recovery is what brings you here doesn't need to be um, an addiction to alcohol or drugs. Actually, our largest group of people are um, those with codependency issues. Mm -hmm. And then our largest men's group is actual sex, actually sexually, sexual integrity. Mm -hmm. So pornography addiction and so forth. Um, for the women, the other large group other than codependency is anger. Um, and that's so important for us to be able to talk about with one another and to discuss why do we have this? Where is it coming from? And that's one thing I absolutely love about Celebrate Recovery is that people are here literally from everything from grief, um, from losing a spouse or a child or a friend to divorce. Um, that's a very difficult issue all in itself to being raised by an abusive um, parent. These conversations are so important because we're sitting here and saying, 
you know, we've experienced these things firsthand by, or we still experience them and it's still a struggle sometimes, you know, on a daily basis, but there, the stigma has to go away and we're not ashamed to discuss it. We're not ashamed that we deal with it. We're proud of the fact that, that we're, we're fighters and we do, we fight for this all the time. And that yet we are still our successful business women who can, can do both. And just because we've had, you know, a mental wellness conversation surround us doesn't mean that we're, that we're not successful and the stigma didn't stop us from doing that. So I think that that's also important because I think there's a lot of people who are still scared to come out and discuss it or to ask for help or, you know, to acknowledge it to themselves, even that they struggle because they just, that, that stigma is still real as much as we fight it. Every so day. many open wounds that have even occurred from 9-11 or that have occurred from our addiction or have occurred from relationship breakups, domestic violence. Right. And all of these wounds, I feel like right now are just, right. they're just out there, you know, like these nerve endings. Yeah, that's a great way to put it, actually. And that's, that's what happens when, when people have unresolved trauma. It, you know, we're, we're, we're amazing beings in how we can compensate for things like that and, and get up every day and put the game face on and go out there and go to work and interact with our, our neighbors and do all that stuff. When behind the mask, when we finally have a, you know, the end of the day, get down, we take the mask off and we're exhausted. Yeah. And because there's this burden that people carry around when they have, uh, you know, trauma that's unresolved. Can't imagine losing a father to suicide and then losing your sister. It has to be um, very traumatic. That's my goal: is to help someone else not suffer this pain. And um, if I can help prevent even one or two suicides, then I've done something good. I've, I've tried to, I'm trying to help to discuss what's left behind. And, well, I didn't see the signs of my sister's depression and anxiety and the COVID and how COVID-19 was affecting her. She never, trans, she never got COVID-19, but her dental practice was shut down. Her best friend died of cancer. Her other friend passed away. And she had stopped training. When you look at the whole of the matter, you see someone in incredible pain. Um, when it comes to the area of mental health especially, what do you think, Steve, should be done? Yeah, so I think mental health is, is somewhat in line with what I just was talking about with technology and integrative medicine even, in that you know when, when people think of mental health, there's this, um, this stigma, this, this um, belief that mental health is the people who need a suicide hotline or need to be hospitalized. And that can be further from the truth. That might make, uh, you know, two to 3% of the population. And there's probably two to 3% of the population that don't have mental health, you know, issues of some sort. So the rest of everyone lives in that gray and just like the hospital system, you know, you need to uh, look at all the, the data, look at the people, spread them out, and then say who fits in these gray areas, how do we triage them, and how can they uh, see a mental health professional? What is the message that you want people to really know? Obviously, you've, wrote, you've written a book about this, you talk about this a lot. What is the main message and the take home for people? That you're not alone. I don't really think that there's anybody today that hasn't been touched in some way by mental health or addiction. So many people have lost loved ones to suicide or overdose. We have to normalize talking about mental health. You know, we, we can continue to say stress and anxiety, but really the issue is that we're having mental health issues. So if we want to, you know, cross that barrier, I often say that when I give my book to people, sometimes they'll take it and they'll turn it down because they don't want anybody to think that they're having an issue with mental health because it says it on the cover of the book. So we have a lot of work to do in, um, in normalizing, having these kind of conversations 
then it won't be so bad when we are struggling, where we can say, not just at home to our parents or our family or our loved ones, but in the corporate sector as well, there needs to be more of an open dialogue about mental health because we're spending most of our time at work today, whether it be virtual or in person, socially distanced, we're still spending most of our time working. So we really need to talk about it more. Yes, we do if we fear someone is thinking about ending their life. So I'll tell you what saved my life. I had a therapist that said, are you having suicidal thoughts? And I said, yes. So that at that moment was the end of isolation for me. And now I could get the right help. I was introduced to a psychiatrist, went on medication for six months, created this wonderful new journey through a community of recovery, the love of my parents. I had a lot of support and I certainly talked about it as much as possible. All right, thank you, Sharon. So we cannot be afraid just to simply ask the question, are you having suicidal yes. thoughts? All right, thank you for joining thank us. You. Important information to share, especially right now. Well, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 1-800-273-TALK-8255. Calls will be routed to crisis operations in your local county and locally. You can also call 211. I'll post those numbers again. So on don't forget, if you mention that you have seen the show or listened to the podcast, Thai Technology, three months for free.